Happy Saturday, everyone. Welcome to the Pop Up TV. This is Kevin. 516, May 16th, 2020, also known as the worst year in my lifetime. Uh, we've had a myriad of failures in 2020. So we're not going to spend too much time on the on the negatives, but we're going to move past it. Um, it's Saturday morning here in Chicago and not sponsored by Revolution Brewing, but to keep my nerves at ease, I'm right at noon or what is it time? What time is it? Two o'clock? Right at two o'clock. I'm cracking my first beer of the day. So we got a couple more of those on the way. Um, I see Nick. Nick, my guy, Nick from Virginia is in the call. Appreciate you, you know, pulling up on us, fam. Um, constantly here supporting. We really appreciate that. Um, we got a massive, massive show today. Um, we got a really cool guest in Kim Lai. She's going to come through and pull up on us and talk a bunch of different things like humble beginnings, uh, talk about also success, um, you know, brand development, brand strategy, her time with, you know, Calvin Klein in terms of an ambassadorship working with them and kind of get into some mindfulness, right? Um, part of my you know, rant at the beginning was was intentional because we're going to talk about mindfulness and how we, you know, persevere through what's going on. And I think Kim is a great guest to talk about that. I see you, uh, Black Jason Matters. You're a legend. You're a legend, man. You know, I appreciate you pulling up on us. Um, thank you so much for your support. We we appreciate you, you know, pulling up and, and supporting the movement. Um, so thank you to Nick and J uh, Nick and Jason for pulling up uh, today on this fine Saturday. Um, we got a bunch of cool items for sale today as well. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna sell a few pairs of shoes. Uh, I got a Jordan Five. We're gonna pull out here in a moment. I got a Supreme uh, waist bag, the North Face collaboration, the Leaves collab from a year back or so, and then uh, I'm gonna raffle off or uh, sell off, auction off the uh, Medicom Burger Lamp today, which is a premium item if you're into collectibles like that and home goods. So I think we have a pretty good lineup today. So not only do we have Kim Lai who's you know, tuning in all the way from California, but we got some hard to get items here on the stream as well. Um, I don't know, like today, before we got in the chat, we were talking about uh, socks. Uh, Gabe actually brought up uh, Bernard socks, who's here six feet away, of course. Uh, but it looks like Bernard's wearing uniform experience, uniform experiment crew socks um, with the ringer. They look pretty nice. I wish I could pull them on camera, but... Yeah, Bernard, what season are those socks? <laughs> now, let's talk about Bernard's outfit real quick. I know you can't see him because Bernard's camera shy, but Bernard has a Huff flowery bucket hat on. What kind of shirt is that? It's uh, a homie that does. Um, Will Galvin, actually. Shout out to Bizarre Love. Shout out to Bizarre Love. Okay. He just did a huge party. Uh, it was actually pouring rain that fucking day. I still went because I wanted to show the story. Got it. So it's pretty tough to hear. Bernard? Yeah. Okay. But like, so thanks for the thanks for the overview on the outfit. Again, he has those tweed or those aren't tweed. I don't know. Bernard Bernard's per, per usual. If anyone knows Bernard Estanislaw, also known as the marine biologist, also known as George Costanda, <laughs> also known as Before Bernard and many other names. I reminisce is another one. Um, Pinoy Styles is another one. The Stone Face. So yeah, I mean, um, yeah, Nick. See, we got mics and filters. We're growing, baby. We're out here trying to do our thing. So, but again, let me finish this thing on Bernard. He's the drippiest dude I've met. So again, if we ever get him on camera, if we're ever able to get like that, you know, fee that we can pay him to get him on camera. Uh, you can see the drip in live. So uh, Molly's going downstairs to get Johnny, who's uh, running the, the pop-up support. Molly's wearing an awake shirt. And what kind of pants are those, Molly? Uh, I don't know. She has no idea. <laughs> I probably bought it for her anyway. So, again, we, got, we keep Molly looking fresh. Um, but, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get into the show a little bit. Um, I did want to, again, just bring a little bit of humor to the beginning of it uh, because we do have some really deep dialogue that we're going to you know, tap into here in a moment. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and preview the items that we're going to sell. Then I'll go ahead and get into the first auction. And then we're going to go ahead and jump into our first guest. So today we're going to be selling this. Um, it's a Supreme North Face Leaves uh, waist bag. Brand new with tags. This is pretty cool. 
Um, we're going to start this one at uh, 225, which is which is far less than uh, market value. So we're going to get this one going on a little bit later in the program. I did want to pull this one out because it is um, getting to that season where waste bags are prevalent. So we have this one from a couple seasons back by Supreme. We have the um, we have the off white from the 10 package. We have the Vapor Max. Uh, so this is a really cool one as well. Uh, this is a size four, so it's a petite shoe. So for our female viewers or, you know, Nick, um, Bernard, since he's here, all the other homies that may have ladies on the sidelines, this might be a good one to pull out for them. Uh, but this is, you know, dead stock uh, Vapor Max uh, from Off-White. Again, if you remember, this is one that uh, with the original 10 that came out a couple years back, um, Virgil took this and, and, again, talked about the deconstructed tongue and all that type of stuff. He snapped with this one. Uh, so we got that one going a little bit later in the show. Uh, we also have one of my favorites, Air Jordan 5, uh, Fire Red 5, if you will. Uh, this is the recent retro that came out a couple weeks ago. Um, Nike on the back, of course. You may have heard me rant about that on some of our um, promo material, but I love this shoe. Um, 1990 is when this shoe came out, the fifth Jordan. And again, this one's designed by Tinker Hatfield. Um, speaking of, you know, off-white earlier on the previous shoe, this is one that Virgil recently flipped, but uh, I like the OG colorway of this one. So it's really good to see that they brought this one back uh, in high quality with Nike on the back. So we're excited about that one. We have uh, a Jordan 11, the black and red 11, playoff 11, bread 11, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Father's Day 1996 shoe is what I like to refer to it as uh, when Jordan won his first championship back from retirement. This is the shoe that he was wearing. You may have seen on the last dance uh, last week. They kind of showed that um, clip of him laying on the floor weeping. He was wearing this shoe uh, when Randy Brown came in and kind of helped him out. So, like, again, this is an awesome, awesome remake. This is the third time they remade this shoe, but it's one that I, I get every single time. It's one of my favorites. So we got this uh, Jordan. So yeah, um, that's really what we kind of have going up today. And I'm going to take a sip of my Revolution beer, Hazy Hero, to cool off a bit as it's increasing in temperature here in the basement. Bear with me. So again, I did want to preview our guests, and I was hoping that we could get Kim on the line here, um, here shortly. Uh, we're going to loop her in here on Skype in a moment. But again, to just to give you a preview, Kim is a woman I met through um, one of my homies, a guest that we had several weeks ago um, with regards to that. Um, talk about who inspires her and then get into kind of what she's working on as well as, you know, um, some other discussions that we have on mental health, especially in this environment. I think it's really important that we take moment and pause for things like that as a part of our as a pro part of our programming. Five minutes on the uh, air Jordan. Okay. The fives, Five minutes left. Cool. Um, are we are able to loop Kim in right now? Yeah, so I shot her a message on um, Skype. If she's listening, Kim, we're almost ready for you. Okay, Kim. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> awesome. In the meantime, I did want to uh, kind of talk about, you know, what's happening here in Chicago recently. So, again, for our audience, you may see we got some comments from Nick, some comments from Jake, some of our um, regulars that pull up on our program. Uh, yeah, we're doing everything we can to you know, improve this experience for you, the viewer, as we continue to scale the concept. So we have invested a bit more into some of our audio equipment. We've got feedback from the guests that you know, sometimes it's hard to hear what we're talking about. So instead of having the lab mic, the big room mic, we now have a personal microphone to give you a better experience. Um, when I talk to Kim, is it good? Uh, I'll just try to, we're good. Yeah, we're about to start. All right, cool. So... Um, we also have got, you know, invested into some headwear. So I'm going to plug this into the microphone now. We should be able to have a crisp sound. Go ahead and test it with this. All right. Can you hear me, Kim? I can, yeah, I can hear you. Again. I can hear you yes. perfectly. How's you, how are you doing today? Good. How are you? Doing good. We're going to bring you in on video here in a moment. So just okay. bear with me. Okay. All right. So while we're while we're working on that, it should be up on the screen now. But while we're pulling this through, how you doing? How how's COVID treating you? <laughs> COVID's treating me like more well than I expected, to be honest. I mean, the first week was kind of intense. 
I think everybody was in shambles, like, oh my God, what do I do? What's life gonna be like after this? But then once you turn off the news, you know, and just focus on you and let all those skeletons come out of the closet, whatever you need to fucking heal. Can I cuss on here? Yeah, you can, can you can say whatever you want. <laughs> you, you just gotta heal all those skeletons. I feel like life is, um, it's great because there's so many experiences that's happening within this these four walls mm -hmm. that's grow as an individual. Right. So. Yeah. No, I'm I'm right there with you. You know what I'm saying? I uh but again, I I tried to do a, a intro for you a, little, a few moments ago and I don't know if I could do it justice. You're just such a fabulous woman, a really dynamic person that we're yeah. really excited to have on the show today. Um but before I, you know, kind of got into some questions, I really just wanted to give you the space and kind of talk about where you're from. So, I know that you're from SoCal. You grew up in San Diego this past holiday. My family and friends, we spent some time in San Diego in Old Town. Tell us about San Diego. What was, what was it like growing up there for you? Man, San Diego. Like, I grew up in, like, what we call okay. East Side, City Heights. Um, City Heights was a different type of neighborhood. You know, you had a lot of gangs, a lot of Crips, Asian Crips, to be exact. You had a drip drops of some bloods. Uh, but everybody was cool, you know, besides all, like, the, the violence. Everyone literally, like, we played in the alley so much. Like, us as kids, I think I was into Japanese import cars at one point nice. like everyone would work on their integras in the back and their 95 hatchbacks and we would just be as kids in our little chrome huffy bikes like yo like when we grow up we want to have a japanese import so it, mm -hmm. it was cool i had like a, like a sand lot like experience so it was it was you really know, it's, cool it's funny like really, it's really a completely cool. different like wave like i grew up in detroit and mm -hmm. i was reeling about muscle cars so i wanted a mustang you know drop top gt yeah. I wanted a Camaro. So yeah. I hear you talk about Integras and, you know, like Supras and all that type of stuff. It's really interesting <laughs> to hear the, you know, all, all the way across the country at the same time, you know, you were on a different wave. So, but that's it's, that SoCal, a, that's that SoCal vibe, right? You know, it's so diverse in San Diego. And then where I grew up, like it was really diverse because you had Somalians, you had Cambodians, Vietnamese, Chinese, Mexicans, and everyone got along. You know, besides the gang violence, everyone got along because they were really into that mm -hmm. Japanese import. So I could see why in Detroit, because, you know, that's that's what I, I believe, like, GM was there. Yeah, GM and point. Ford. Yeah, see, so I would see why you're in the muscle. It wasn't until high school I was I can't do this import shit, Tokyo Drift no more. I want an American muscle 1967 Shelby GT as my Sunday whip. So, awesome. You know, things change. Things change for sure. <laughs> So building on that, right? Like I said, we we I have I've spent a few times I've been to San Diego a few times. It's a beautiful city, has a lot to offer. There's some cool shopping mm -hmm. there, uh, a lot of history, right? So um, when I think about San Diego, things that stick out to me, and I'm gonna test you a little bit. Um, you know, Jack in the Box is from San Diego, right? You're aware? Of course, I went. It was literally up the street from my high school. The OG. I went to like the og uh jack in the box and the headquarters I, we went there for career day and i was just like you know we were shadowing at that corporate office and i was like i don't know if i can do cubicles you know <laughs> <laughs> okay so you it's okay so that corporate life is sandy like in uh, jack in the box i have to ask you i'm going to assume i'm not sure if your dietary restrictions or anything like that but i'm going to assume at least at one point in your life you had a beef hamburger right Okay, so with course, that, yes. if you look at burgers, now, California, in my opinion, all the times I spent there, in and out is the wave. That's what everyone talks about. That's what everyone really likes. But I'm a big fat burger dude. So if you had to eat one hamburger between fat burger and in and out, which one would it be? Yeah, in and out is a hype. It is a hype. I, I can see why. Like people like love it. Mm -hmm. Price is right too, but uh, mm -hmm. stop eating beef in 2010. So fat burger, <laughs> fat burger off. Like have a turkey burger option. So you know your girl's gonna have to say uh, fat burger. And then plus mm -hmm. it has that old school vibe to it too. That grease burger, sesame I bun. Love that shit, man. I like that shit. You know, I feel yeah, like I feel like that makes a burger a sesame bun. And I feel like In and Out just offers like you know basic bread, some right. small ass patty. You know, not enough meat for me. And I feel like a fabric, you really get that like thick quarter right. ounce uh, beef. It feels like a grill. So 
being from SoCal, growing up in the secret menu bullshit, I'm going to have to go with Fat Burger. I'm with you. I'm a, I'm a huge Fat Burger fan. I didn't even know what Fat Burger was until I heard Ice Cube rap about it back in the early 90s. Um, yeah. It was a good day, you know, two in the morning, got the Fat Burger. So I didn't even know what it was. I thought he was joking. And then when I ended up going to California, I was like, oh, shit, they got, they got a Fat Burger. And, like, you know, me in that Midwest trying to, like, live out all of my like early 90s hip-hop fantasies i went into the fat burger and flexed on them and i and i and i, got <laughs> it and I did the damn thing so i fuck with fat burger heavy <laughs> another thing it was san diego um as you know i don't know if you knew this or not i'm sure you have but a couple things san diego is considered the sunniest city in the united states oh okay. yeah of course. and you of live course. now in los angeles which might be the most the city with the most smog in the united states okay <laughs> but as of the pandemic though like the air is cleared okay, up so the air is, well let's take the pandemic off the table if you look at the sunniest yeah. city in the united states and right up the pacific coast highway you have potentially this most the smoggiest city in the united states when you go outside mm -hmm. and you get out in the element if you had to think about navigating through that smog or all that sunlight which one do you prefer well, of course, like so the breeze in San Diego, like you feel the difference, okay? Being in LA, when I go back to my mom, right when I cross, like we call it, uh, there's these two um, big plants that you see and everybody calls it the two boobs because mm -hmm. it looks like a boob sample. So right when you pass that mark, you can smell the sea salt in the fresh air, right, right when you cross. Yeah, so I got to, you know, and plus, San Diego beaches are 10 times better. The air quality is better. So I can't stand the smog, especially because of my half Asian okay. side. We have a skin type is different. You know, it work a little different. So if you go into smog, you're going to break out. Break out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and not, I'm not with it at all. And the air here reminds me of Vegas air. It's very right. dry. You already have that dry desert air right. on top of that smog. No bueno. No. Yeah, going a little bit east out of the city, you get into Ontario, the Inland Empire, you kind of get into uh, Cabazon before you get to Palm Springs. I would say the, the further east you go, the, the drier the air gets. But I think in general, the Southern California is a beautiful part of the country. It has a lot to offer. Um, it's I love going out there, not only for the for the weather, but also for the shopping and stuff like that food as well. Yeah, see, San Diego's food culture is there because I mean, you can say LA too, but I feel like LA has gotten a lot of influences, especially mm -hmm. from San Diego, because we're so close to tea. Mm -hmm. Like, we have the best. I, I feel like street tacos. I don't care. You can argue with me all day. You can be from Arizona, you can be from Texas. I will fight you that our Mexican food is still the best because it's so diverse. Tijuana is not just full of Mexicans. You have Hondurans, Salvadorians, and there's um, now you yeah, have okay. Haitians there. So there's a lot. Um, you know, and they really bring their part of the, like, their culture and food to Tijuana, which comes to San Diego and the best of, of all of it, so. Yeah, yeah. So building on that, I think it's a, it's a good segue into some of the other things I wanted to talk to you about, not only where you're from, but, like, the early, the early years of, of Kim and, and kind of how you, you know, begin to delve into this fashion space, right? So before you were uh you know calvin klein ambassador before you were into the you know starting a shoe company with me and joe and all that type of stuff um you got into the kind of got into the subculture a little bit tell us about your early beginnings with with sneakers and streetwear and that type of stuff sneakers, sneakers started in fifth grade um there was a kid <laughs> named kevin so shout, shout out, out to, to kevin. Kevin. uh <laughs> shout out to kevin because he always roasted on me because i have okay. hail issues you know i'm i'm first uh, Jen, American. My parents um, migrated okay. here from Vietnam. And, and uh, you know, of course, it's just hand-me-downs. We grew up not having too much, and I never really sweat on, like, the whole name brand thing. And this kid was, like, clowning on my shacks the whole time. Mm -hmm. he like, he's like, what are you know what I mean? Are they, they're like, they're wannabe Jordans, blah, blah, blah. So I got tired of that shit. I'm so tired of it. I got to, like, do something. So my dad did construction at the time, and mm -hmm. I asked, like, yo, can I can I hop on and paint some houses for you like with you so I can earn like a hundred bucks, and I did that and I got my first pair of Reebok pumps all white. Okay. And I I, I was like, what's up, Kevin? You know, trying to flex 
like Kevin, look, like these ain't Payless no more. These re yeah, I stepped my game up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So from there, I think that kicked off. Like, I, I think that changed my entire yeah. life because, like, I got hooked onto sneakers and the culture and music, and I had to discover like that side on my own because you know I grew mm -hmm. up Vietnamese, so I speak Vietnamese, and I never really got to explore my my other side, my American side, my black side. So I really had to learn everything, the urban culture, music, like, you know, got, I'm, I heard my dad listening to Bone Thugs, but I'm like, my dude, do you, ever do you ever understand what they're saying? You know what I mean? So I'm just like, you know, really took, I took all that. And then by the time my senior year of high school, I was able to like buy so much shoes. I started collecting so much shoes. They weren't like super rare. I got the SB trainers in Forest Green. And I couldn't afford like, you know, the the Jordan retro ones and fives and 11. So I, I bought the, I, I think I sent it over to you, the Air McFlies. I think that's what they're called. They were, I think they were like, no one liked them at school. And I thought they were the coolest thing because yeah. they looked like a Nike blazer to me. And I didn't buy a blazer at the time. It was until like later on I went to a Nordstrom Rack and I found an all black Nike blazer with this like wannabe, uh, wood okay. imprinted soul with, with the white and I thought tips. it was do yeah, I wear like, that yeah okay can I pause on that yeah yeah let me talk let me talk about yeah. that shoe real quick yeah. so the shoe that you're talking about it had a canvas yeah. upper right it was black with the black swoosh and it had the brown midsole mm -hmm. with the white mm -hmm. tip so earlier in the show before we brought you on we were talking about one of our one of our in-studio guests his name is Bernard um he had he still has those shoes uh those black blazers and I had them too. Uh, we picked them up at Opry Mills. It was a B grade, I think, um, when we got those as well. But the shoe that you're talking about, I, I, I've had as well. It's like an iconic outlet pickup for sure. <laughs> iconic. Yeah. What size, what size is Bernard? He's Bernard's just, a size I, seven. I, you know. Okay, perfect. I'm seven and a half, like. <laughs> yeah, if you try you. to get rid of those <laughs> i will snag got you. <laughs> awesome uh but listen so again building on top of what we were already talking about like how you got into the industry and that type of stuff you know we were doing the prep before the show and we were talking about you know you and i were like calibrating and you were talking about how you took that leap you know your entrepreneur spirit got into you and you wanted to just get out of san diego and move to la with no cash so taking a leap like that you know yeah having a plan, but not necessarily having any guarantees for myself, especially as an entrepreneur and other people in the room who are trying to start their own businesses and people that are watching our live stream that may be entrepreneurs themselves. What was that like to take that leap and how, what fear did you have to overcome to kind of lean into that experience? God, <laughs> I don't even, I, it seems like it was like yesterday. I feel like I wasn't getting love back home, mm -hmm. you know? And I felt like I had to like, there, there was a sense of fear of like, how am I gonna survive? How am I gonna pay rent? The norms, right? right? How am I gonna mm -hmm. eat? But at the same time, I felt excited. I felt like my life had more purpose than just being in San Diego right. and running into like everyone and them kind of doing the normal thing as like engineers and doctors and mm -hmm. lawyers. And that was, and I'm really fortunate that my mom was in one of those Asian moms that were like, you got to be a doctor. You got to be a lawyer. You know, like, you know, she just was like, OK, if you want to flip burgers at McDonald's, you better be the best motherfucking burger flipper at McDonald's. So I was like, OK, cool. I'm going to take this leap of faith into the creative arts, into fashion and specifically menswear, mm -hmm. because I've always been a top boy all my life. And uh, I like to dress, you know, I like to intermix my mm -hmm. androgynous stuff. And Yes, yes. And I wanted to dive deeper. And that was during the time um, that the whole dapper movement was so Dandy heavy, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I moved to LA because I knew uh, the left shoe company was up here. And they are a shoe company, a bespoke menswear shoe company from Helensky. And they had a really cool technology. Um, they had this foot scanner. I think I sent yeah. you a photo. Um, you put a, a green sock on, you put your foot there and it measures your foot to the T so that you can pick the style and the fabric, whatever textures that you want to make your bespoke shoe, whether it's a Chelsea, a Derby, or Oxford wingtip. So I thought that was fascinating. I found, it, I found them on Instagram 
and I needed a fucking job. So I did not know what the fuck I was doing. I just like reached out. I was like, hey, look, I love what you guys are doing. Can I get an interview? Got an interview. I was like, I'm more than willing to do like be a sales associate, even though like at the time, sales associate in LA, like you can't, you can't pay rent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like there's no, it's like $11 an hour. And um, I, I somehow finessed them to talking about like, you know, oh, you know, I'm a creative director. I, like I know a little photography and stuff and they offered okay. me a social media position and uh, street style photography for their blog and whatnot. So I did that off like a really cheap Samsung DSLR. I bought on Craigslist for 50 bucks and my photos were shit. <laughs> and I they loved it, you know, I was like, okay, this is a big company with a really like dope image and they love these shitty mm -hmm. photos. I guess it worked. Uh, long short, I think that really kicked off my career. From there, I just fell into like the whole branding aspect of everything, and that's when like my mind got more curious, and I started like applying to other mm -hmm. jobs, like War Boswell, who uh, who did a collaboration with Del Toro. I don't know if you guys remember Del Toro mm -hmm. uh, from Miami, yeah. So and, and that just really sparked. So when I heard thing. you speaking about like kind of leaning into the job, just you wanted to be there. Uh, it sounds like uh -huh. you were faking it till you make it. And honestly, I would say whether whether you're in a creative space or you're in a corporate environment where I traditionally come from for the past 15 years, you know, when you go into a new role, you have a new opportunity. Again, this is for our uh, for our guests. It's really around, um, you know, f you know, faking it till you make it. Just like show up, have that hunger, have that aggressiveness and learn. Don't make the same mistakes twice. Build on it. But typically you can, you can get, you can get some traction from there. So it's really interesting to hear that part of your story. Um, so after you kind of did that thing, and, you know, again, and we know that like we've, we've read about you and we've done some of those things. We, we know that you've over the years have, you know, you use the word finesse, but you've, what I, some, I think sometimes people have a bad connotation with the word finesse. It's sometimes people think of it being intentional or, or being sleazy. No, it's more around seizing the opportunities that you have and having the intuition to figure it out, right? That's a long-winded way of saying finesse. So with that, you know, you, you've you kind of built your own company, you've been an entrepreneur, you, you've done all these branding things and connecting with a lot of interesting people. How did you fall into that uh, ambassadorship with Calvin Klein? They, growing up, like, you know, Calvin Klein has always been a big part of my life, even when it was a hand-me-down. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've always kind of related with the culture because it's a contemporary brand. I, my mom's like a huge Calvin Klein. I took a photo of some Chelsea boots that I bought and they like, they saw it. I saw like a DM and it said Calvin Klein. I was like, is this shit serious? <laughs> is this you, you know what I mean? I, it. I was like, is this for real? And they want you to be a part of our community, our network. And from there, I was just like, this can't be real. I had to like double check two times, three times. Like, is there a blue check mark? I was like, okay. <laughs> and from, from there, it just like, it was a happy marriage. Like I've done such great stuff with them. Like their pride campaign okay. was awesome. Doing that with them and share my story. And then, uh, yeah, the recently just shot for a classic campaign with them mm -hmm. here in LA and it's been it's been such it's so crazy it's just like you know i has a bittersweet relationship mm -hmm. with instagram Same. but i don't i don't have a crazy following either and it just comes to show you can have a hundred followers and you could still push out stuff that you like and if a brand really like sees that potential mm -hmm. within you and they truly numbers because everyone can like fake their numbers right yeah totally you get that attention people want that like that's who I, I really truly value brands that look past the number and is all about their right. ethos. And we talked about yeah. That. yeah. So what stood out to me in what you just said, Kim, is honestly the authenticity piece, right? So being a female, being a LGBTQ, um, being from, you know, an immigrant family, um, all these types of things that potentially could be detractors for someone's career and that type of stuff. You know, you've seized, you've seized that opportunity going back to what we were talking about earlier with finesse. So in these instances where you had to make that choice, am I going to am I going to present myself as an authentic woman, an authentic, potentially queer woman, all these types of things? At what point did you have to choose? 
And I'm asking personally for myself, not for the audience as much. This is more for me. This is a selfish question as someone that sometimes in a professional setting has to temper my authenticity to fit in. How have you found that secret sauce Ooh. to show up and be the true Kim, be yourself, uh, show up the right way and, and have a meaningful experience with, with the projects that you're working on? I think it's it, at the end of the day, like you got to ask when you're stepping into anything, right? Do this company, does this career, do these people, do they align with who I am? Because why should I put on a mask every day um, to, to like, you know, be cohesive, a quote, like, you know, see, energize with these people who maybe not even share same interests or can accept the fact that I am queer, I am a minority, in so many ways I am a woman. You know, so for me, I always look at that and I've always felt like um, I've toned it down a lot, but I've always had a temper. And when I go into a new corporate, mm -hmm. I've, I've had the nine to five, you know, and I go in there and it's a in the meeting with all men. They're not going to treat me the same. I'm not going to come in there and put on like, I don't know, my, um, you know, yep. a certain voice that I have to put on. Right. I'm still just going to be me. And if they don't like it. It. Because at the end of the day, if people truly see your value, then they're they're going to be open to getting to know you, and you're going to also be feel right. comfortable enough to be you. Because the end of the day, you can't be you, and you put on a mask every day. The mask that's more effort towards your job. You you go in there, you already working on like a certain position right. in your your job, right? And then you got to put on a mask. That's that's like two masks that you got to go in and just pretend to be this person, kind of keep up with being this person that you're not. That That's more work. And I believe in life, it's effortless. So that's, that's go are, up. Those are fucking bars, man. Like, that's that's real talk. That's real fucking talk. I mean, you know, you know, Jake, one of the homies that's in the chat right now, I'm not sure if you can see the chat on Twitch, but one of the homies, Jake, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's Filipino as well, Asian American, uh, who is in a corporate setting, right? Don't mean to out you, Jake, but he's saying that I feel that it's more around like, you know, trying to figure out like what your passion is, how you show up. And those are conversations that I've had with people in this room that are not on camera. You know, I've seen it with conversation that we're having as well. Some others, it's like, how do you find that? How do you, it's, it's like, why should we have to toe the line, right? Of authenticity? Why can't we just be why can't it just be natural? Why can't it just be real? You know what I'm saying? So it's it's encouraging to hear, you know, a peer who I, a person that I consider a peer of mine find success and find solace in being themselves and showing up the way that they that they want to show up. Regardless. Um, jumping into like this other question I had, you know, um, we, we touched a little bit earlier on your gender. Uh, so being a female kind of in the industry that you're in being, you know, creative director and all that type of stuff. How have you, um, how have you, how has it been for you and your experience seeing more and more females in these positions of leadership, seeing more and more females in these position of, you know, calling the shots, especially when it comes to brands and, you know, uh, marketing and, and those types of strategy. What's that been like for you over the past couple of years? I think it's been I think it's been beautiful seeing more and more females stepping up to the plate. I feel like females, um, a lot of us have some amazing ideas and it's always getting shot down. And I'm just super grateful that the world's changing in a light that they're putting like women on this high pedestal and women are changing and shifting perspectives, even when it comes to uh, art direction or branding and marketing, you see it, you see so much of it. Uh, what was that song with uh, Drake? Fuck. It was a female, uh, she was a female director and she got the cast and she had like so many um, females on the video, in the video, and it just showed a whole new light to his song. You know, he could have had the Lamborghini, the money, like if it, it was director X or someone uh, that's a male. I think more and more, it's um, a lot of women are getting to share a little bit of their story within their artwork. So it- Yeah, cool. I mean, I think, I think you're right. I think it's, I think it's, it's time. Uh, there's, you know, there's more than half of the world's population is female. So why would we, why would we not 
at least have equality and like the voices that we hear when it comes to uh, things that are gender specific, right? Um, when I when I take it a bit further, I see some other females, if we kind of take it back to fashion, right? Like um, individuals that are of Asian descent, right? So like Ray at CDG, she's an icon, right? Late 70s, early 80s, she's an icon. And she, spar- she spawned a, a whole tree of designers, female designers that have gone on, right? So uh, Shitose at Sakai, uh, she's doing her thing, right? You have um, the woman, I can't think of her name off the top of my head, but from Cactus Plant Flea, Mar- Flea Market, right? She's an Asian woman from Ohio. Uh, you know, you have all these, you know, you have Yoon Ambush, right? From Ambush in Japan, right? There's so many females now that are assumed that that's really encouraging, especially with what you're trying to do at in that Fade Network Studio. Why don't you talk a little bit about what you're doing on your own personal venture? So that is my uh, digital agency, kind of focusing right now on branding and business development. Mm-hmm. In the Fade is an acronym. It stands for Fashion Art Design and Entertainment, just because I feel like that's always been my realm. But as of recently, I've been dabbling into food too, because if you follow me on Instagram, you can see I'm always posting like some food, food shit. You're up in in the kitchen and I just really want to dabble mm-hmm. more in with food products and working with more restaurants and helping uh, develop menus and concepts but that that really fate started because um back when I was at the, sh- the shoe de- uh not the shoe deli the left shoe company I was freelancing and I noticed like you know as all freelancers know you're not always going to have that consistent paycheck right. all the time and that should bug me because you know i go months and i can't even look at an almond the same kevin like i remember eating almonds for fucking dinner with water and some camel turkish golds because i don't know how i could i could still afford to pack cigarettes but <laughs> but um yeah like i just wanted to create a platform where freelancers could consistently connect with companies and brands that are willing to work with outside contractors and move to new york and paris so that was like kind of left in the back burner. And during that gap till 2019, I helped people start creative, um, building a foundation for the creative agencies and then started helping with some PR stuff in France. And I realized like, wow, like I can help build agencies. Why not make my own? So when I got back from Paris in 2018, after uh, fashion week, I came home, I was a little like shot. My brain was just like everywhere. And then in 2019, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna start fade up again. This time, not an right. app, just the platform. other digital agencies. Like I work with so many freelancers and contractors that I feel like is a part of the fade family. And on, so I make sure that people get paid right. I'm kind of like the middleman. I'm connecting people with brands and companies that I feel like, okay, cool. He has a certain aesthetic, this brand's a certain aesthetic, they would work. Even if they're from like Chicago or New York, I'm willing to connect them with uh, other outside brands that are willing to ship their products to wherever they're at and just like shoot a dope campaign. So yeah, that's great. The network connection. So in this environment where creatives, entrepreneurs, freelancers can't necessarily thrive in the normal environment, how have you thought about pivoting your business or at least how you engage with these entrepreneurs or these uh, freelancers? Uh, to be honest, I haven't thought about that yet because I've been so, uh, I've been putting a pause on the business because I'm really trying to understand my my niche and what, what I'm trying to bring. Because at first I felt like I was all over the place. Like, you know, so many of these agencies these days offer like a vast list of things. So I haven't even gotten to tap into that. But right now what I am offering is one-on-one with these freelancers to try to help get their um, foundation together and that's their mental uh, foundation and also like their business foundation because I feel like I understand that business foundation side. So, so that's what I've been trying to do with the people I know one-on-one. But I haven't really like tapped in. I'm, I'm happy you brought that up because that's, Really like planting a seed. Well, that's what it's here about. It's mutually beneficial. I ask the questions, but we all share the knowledge and all share the motivation. So uh, I hope you feel like it's two sided, like what you're sharing with us are no. massive nuggets, and we appreciate that. No, yeah. of course. I love the transparency. Yeah. That's that's key, right? Um, 
so so speaking of that like speaking of this situation one of the things i definitely wanted to talk to you about and when we were catching up the pa- this past week in preparation for this show you know one thing that you were adam- adamant about discussing was mental health and you know as a as an individual who really believes in like taking care of your mental as much as you take care of your physical um and and leaning more into that and being more aware of mental health and those types of things like how ha- how have how have you kind of embraced, you know, that part of yourself or like that muscle, um, that organ and like what, what specifically, you know, what, what for the audience, like what should we be taking away or what should we be thinking about as we move forward? I think with this pandemic, I, everyone's like I said at the beginning when we were sp- uh, speaking earlier about the skeleton coming out of the closet, most people aren't fortunate enough to mm-hmm. have their friends and family around and they're really in self-isolation. And when that happens, I, I've had many calls over the, the course of a week from friends, like, you know, bumping heads with their significant others and stuff. Right. Because you have so much time to think. I think it's, it's a good thing to um, be moving in the closet. And to face those skeletons, you have to face yourself. You have to look in the mirror. You have to own up to your shit, whether you were a good person or a bad person, whatever your situation right. is i feel like you really you can't i don't i believe you cannot elevate as an individual in your career path or whatever your goal your end goal is if you haven't healed those skeletons and we all have those skeletons mm-hmm. you know and we all have those skeletons i told you the first week i was <laughs> losing my shit you know for me to pull myself out of it um you know yep. meditation i always recommend people like i don't know uh pick up my one of my uh, book that changed my life is the power of now by Eckhart okay. Tolle. Um, it, it doesn't speak too much in that spiritual language that most people don't understand. But it, it talks about grounding yourself and being in the present moment. So if you're isolated, and you don't want to meditate, you don't believe in that spiritual stuff. Um, I don't know if you're an atheist, whatever, like, you know, take a moment to just breathe. This just really breathe and just turn off the cell phone, the laptop and all the news and just really take in your environment, hear those echoes in your house, the birds chirping. I really think it helps when you start connecting in that present moment so that you can heal whatever it is that you need yeah. to heal mentally. No, I, I, no, yeah, I, I, don't I agree. Know. I mean, power now, I mean, it, it's really important. Um, there's a quote that you'd mentioned, right? Like what, what's your, what's your go-to quote these days? Do good, become do good, great. become great. That might be the the motto for us as we kind of wrap up this wrap up this conversation with you is do good, be great. Because again, there's no really time better than the present to you know make those pivots, make those changes to achieve the goals that you have in front of you. And you know, I feel listening to you and your story and your conversation, like where you've come from and just knowing you as a person, I, I definitely feel inspired walking away from this conversation. Um, so we, 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 we do appreciate you as a guest, Kim. Thank, we hope to have you back many more times in the future. Thank you so much for, you know, kind of stepping up. Yeah. And if you could leave one last word of wisdom for our guests, I'm going to give the floor to you. And if you also want to talk about uh, kind of your brand or like what you're working on now is your time. Well, uh, currently I'm just focusing on uh, mental health. Like I said, I'm taking a break from the whole business side and I really want to incorporate some of the mental health and even quantum physics, right? For my non-spiritualists out there, my more illogical people, I'm gonna incorporate both and try to simplify how to have a break and how to just breathe and be your yourself through the most simplest uh, ways and techniques. So I'm doing that with TikTok. And if you have a TikTok, you can follow me, Ella Kimster. Don't don't judge me. My dance moves, I'm still working on it or whatever. But, um, <laughs> other than that, like, you know, stop watching the fucking yep. news, okay? Watch your local, go- understand your local government once in a blue moon, what's, what's happening. But other than that, turn that shit off because that shit can par- uh, make you paranoid and uh, makes you go down a spiral. Don't ever compare yourself to someone's journey because there's no age cap to success. And that's, that's it. And thank you for having me on the show. I, I like, seriously, you guys have such an amazing platform. You guys are doing awesome. And I could see you guys elevating and transcending this whole streetwear culture. Thank you so much. Kim, for having that me. means so much. 
we're working on it, right? We still have some shit to figure out. We're not experts. And again, for our guests who have been with us this past two months, you know what I'm saying? We should, we still got shit to do. And so we're trying to figure it out. And more than anything, we just do appreciate, you know, your insight, your perspective. And again, we hope in the future we can have you back on the show. Kim, thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll holler at you soon, okay? Okay. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Appreciate you. Cheers. Bye. Awesome. <clears throat> So as we as we pivot from our conversation with Kim, we're kind of wrapping up this last minute and 40 seconds on the Supreme Waste Bag before we hop into this, the premium item of the day, which is the um, Undercover Medicom bear, Burger Lamp. I just did want to like, share with you guys some, some uh, perspectives and things that I learned from Kim today. Uh, she's from an immigrant family, and she's doing her thing, right? SoCal, you know, trying to make it happen. So more than anything, we appreciate that. Not only is she a female a boss, owns her own business, uh, an entrepreneur, brand strategist in an in a, in a ecosystem that's predominantly male, you have a person of color coming in and doing her thing. Not only is she a person of color and a female, but she's also queer. So having this, you know, this juxtaposition of all these different types of things that is kind of going on with her, you know, that's really inspiring to me. So we, we appreciate Kim and we appreciate, you know, kind of the audience like taking those those insights in. Um, so as we kind of wrap this last item, I did want to just kind of give you guys, guys a preview of what we have coming up next. So for the rest of this afternoon, I'm going to hop into this last item, this burger lamp, which I know everyone wants. We're going to then at the end of our programming, kick it over to Alex Webb, Alexander, the great Alexander X great underscore. Um, we're going to kick it over to him to take us away after we close the bidding for everything. So we did want to just give you guys a preview of that. The beauty of the Twitch app is that you can host and bring in friends and all that type of stuff. So as we kind of, de- you know, as we kind of dive into this space, as we kind of um, dig into kind of what's next for us, we're trying to figure out all the functionality of this this platform as we kind of go along. So, again, more than anything for the fans not sure if you've noticed it, but we've reached affiliate status. So a week ago, a week ago yesterday, we reached affiliate status and we couldn't have reached we could not have reached that without you, the fans, the viewers. So we do appreciate it. All your follows, the subscriptions, again, subscribing to this channel so we can continue to invest it in and build it. We appreciate that so much. Word of mouth, telling others about the content, not only the items that we're selling, the shoes, the clothes, all that shit. But it's also the discussions and the dialogue and the, and the knowledge that we're dropping on you. So we appreciate that. We, we want to continue to build that. So your follows and your subscriptions help so much. Um, so that's my last, you know, shameless plug for the day. But I did want to hop into the this burger lamp and talk about that before we kick it over to Alex. And I know he's getting set up to take us home on some music the rest of this afternoon. But um, this this burger lamp, again, earlier in the show when we were talking to Kim, we were talking about Comme de Garçon and, and like... Re- Ray and like everyone she spawned. Jun Takahashi is, is one of those folks. Uh, he's an individual who started the brand Undercover. It's a Japanese clothing brand. Uh, there's, it's, a, it's a mix of not only like kind of streetwear clothing, but it's also like ready to wear garments. So you might find some trousers. You might find like a, you know, kind of a button up and a jacket uh, and some home goods. But you can also find that T-shirt and shorts and, and collaboration sneakers. And one of the things that, that Jun has done is he's 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 uh, you know dive really deep into the home goods piece the home goods space. So I love I love the stuff that they produce at Undercover. I'm a big fan. I collect a lot of that stuff myself. Um, and honestly, for you, for our guests, I'm putting something from my personal collection out there um, just because I think it's it's fun to share, right? So again, this is a, a burger lamp. This one came out uh, about a month or so, two months ago, three months ago. At this point, I can't. I'm losing time in this pandemic. But this is a it's is a collector's item. It's for home goods. It's a lamp. It's a hamburger with a frowny face with a with a monster face. But it's really cool. You can pick it up and move it from room to room, place to place. Uh, it's battery operated, so you don't necessarily need a cord, so it can it can come and go. Uh, but it it appreciates in value even if used. So if you are a true collector or you are a reseller or you are someone that just wants to display it in your home, this is an item that ten years from now will be worth more than what it costs. I guarantee it. That's why I have several of them. This particular one, we're starting at $400 today, uh, and we're going to let that go to see where it goes. We know that it's worth more than that, but again, we want to make sure that we're getting our customers, our viewers, our, tr- our true fans, some of the items that they covet. So we do have the Medicom 
uh, collaboration with Undercover Burger Lamp for auction today, starting at four hundred dollars. So for the last ten minutes, what I wanted to do is just give it up to the chat. You know, again, we appreciate you. Ch we appreciate you tuning in. We appreciate your patience. We love your engagement in the chat. So again, if you have questions, if you have comments, if you have feedback, feel free to share that with us. We're, we're growing brand. We're growing company. So really trying to make this work. But in the meantime, we did want to uh, kind of open it up for you to just kind of kind of share. OK. Yeah, nice chat. Thanks, man. I thought she was really, I thought Kim was really cool. Like she, super humble woman. She's done a lot. She's seen a lot. Right. And she's really insightful. Yeah. You know, um, it's not, you know, I mean, we, we all here, like we're, we're from the Midwest. Like everyone, I look around the room, everyone here is from the Midwest or, you know, um, the South. So it's like one of those things where you have, you have this, you have this like perception of your mind of people from SoCal. Right. And like growing up in these like surfing towns. But when you have a person that's really real and is like, yo, like I couldn't really afford shit where everyone around you is trying to flex, but still keep it 100. That's that's why I fuck with Kim. You know, she's cool like that. So the mic is ill, bro. Like, I mean, like when I had honestly to keep it 100, when I had the headset in, like, I'm like, damn, I got a sultry voice. Like yeah, I'm out here. I'm you know what I'm saying? Bro, you see the mic like that, yeah. Like Hello. Sexy. I'm, like, no, I'm not, I got the mic, I'm, like, I'm not the I'm sexiest, the but I'm not the unsexiest. So I'm somewhere in the middle. You know yeah. Wait, and the mic, me. yeah. The mic gives me yeah. my sexiness factor is like, yeah, yeah, my, yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, right? So like, if I started the show at sixty, at sixty sexy points with yeah. this microphone, I'm at least a, I'm at least at sixty five, like minimum. Which at sixty five you can round up to seventy, which my wife hates because I like to round up, but um, it gets me at least to a seventy. So, um, but yeah, okay. So again, we got a couple minutes left on this on this burger mic. Um, you know, again, just for the people that are on the live stream, we got we got the crew in here. We got the street team. You know, we got the creative director. We got the tech person. We got the spouse. We got the spouse of the creative director. We're in here. After this, I'm looking at some Marlboro Gold Packs. I'm about to burn back. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. On my side, it looks like it's a little bit zoomed in. It's going to go back. It's going to go back. The other mic, right there. The blue one? The Yeti? No, it was black. I'm going to see if it works. See if it sounds. Yeah. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit up. I'm going to hit up Alex. Make sure that he's teed up for us to go live. Please, if you haven't subscribed. Alex, I see you, my G. Yeah, the mic is... Okay, so I mean, fam, like, we're about to we're, we're about to loop you in in a minute or so. I know your mic game, your whole. You got like a little playlist in the mix that you're gonna take us away with, so we're really excited to hear that. You know, our guest today, Kim, she is a, a big Luther Vandross fan. So I don't know if in your, you know, what's that thing called that they they mix in music with? Uh, but like, what's the what's the what's the brand name? Uh, Serato. Yeah. yeah. So in your Serato, if you don't have, maybe you could load in some like Luther that might set us <laughs> off the right way. You know what I'm saying? So. All right. So what we're about to do now is I'm gonna kick it over to Alex. I'm gonna try this. See if he's streaming. I'm gonna text him to make sure he's in. Make sure he's set up for success. And we're, did y'all, he said, did y'all change the voice? He said, Gabe, did you change the voice on my mic? Yeah, it's not like you, you sound different. Like high pitch, like a chipmunk no, or? Just like deeper, like. I sound, I sound deeper. <laughs> I got some bass, some, some baritone. I didn't, I didn't do that. Yeah. So what I did okay, was, so. I turned on another mic. You guys so, yeah, we're over here just, we're over here just tucking in. You know, this is DJ, DJ, DJ Woods over here. We're losing a real kid. No, yeah, the real, the real cat has been put to sleep. <laughs> Dr. Love is in the house tonight.
we're gonna watch this highlight tape afterwards because like yeah i'm just going for that like bass in my voice and i'm over here nah but we're <laughs> so what happened is i had i had you double mic you had me you had me double mic why are you double mic me, dog? Okay. <laughs> no, but look, okay, so with, on, on all seriousness, we got some homies in the chat, and more than anything, we fuck with the homies that pull up and show up for us every time we brought, like, it means so much to us that y'all pull up. We, we love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, what'd you say? They're like a minute behind. Oh, they're a minute behind? Okay. But listen, um, but again, like, we appreciate we, we, Aaron yesterday's guest. We appreciate you. No, but let me let me get my little left session, Gabe. But you, no, all right, no, but for real, like, we we appreciate y'all so much in helping us grow. We couldn't do this without y'all. And again, I, I glazed over a little bit earlier, but last week we achieved something in a month that we weren't really expecting to achieve a little bit longer, which is reaching affiliate status. And what that means to us as like a growing like startup is we can now figure out ways that we can work with brands and kind of monetize what we're working on. So I'm going to put this out there for those of you that are watching. We're trying to build a team, a gaming team. So if you are into games, if you are into, you know, computer games, whether it's console games, handheld games, we're looking to build a team for people to like work with us and like build our, build our channel. So hit, hit me on, y'all got my phone number, hit any of us on the side, hit us in the DM. Uh, so we can get you a slot on on the on the programming list to get kind of get you out there. Uh, we'll kind of go from there. Um, but in the meantime, I'm gonna like set it up now. I think Alex should be good to go. Let me make sure Alex is streaming. Make sure he's set up so that what we can kick it over to him. What games? I mean, I don't think anyone should be playing any games because I don't fuck with games. I don't play games, but I participate in video gaming. Okay, yeah. so I'm playing Call of Duty. Just to be clear, just to be crisp, right. I participate in video game. I like Call of Duty. I like Animal Crossing. Like, this is another. Those are, two extremes, bro. Those are big extremes, but listen, I'm gonna tell you something. The one is all about happiness, and one's about killing. So we got that juxtaposition in the middle when it comes to gaming on Twitch, where we out here trying to do our thing. But um, we're gonna have a fashion show coming up soon, right? Like. So if y'all are fucking with the fashion piece and you don't have Animal Crossing, I recommend that you get it because we're going to be tapping different folks in our network to kind of kind of flex in that standpoint in the virtual space. And I'm going to be honest with you, like, I got so many bells right now, like, my fits are going to be the coldest. Like, I'm just putting that out there. My, my fits are going to be the coldest. I think he's got some... Think- and I'll be time traveling. Yeah, it'll be time traveling. Yes, he does. Okay. You don't even need bells for we live? Uh, to yeah, I know, but it doesn't hurt. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to kick it over to Alex uh, right now. So, again, he's going to take us away with uh, the sounds.